Hello, I am Gary Bratner of Rent Arb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comics I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, and uh, where you can find these comics or Kickstarters. So, let me start off with, uh, oof, oh man, I bent my cover. Let me start off with, shoot, Hawkeye Volume 2. Hawkeye Volume 2 is by the creative teams of uh, Kelly Thompson on writing, Leonardo Romero, and Michael Walsh, or it could be Michelle, I don't know, um, on art, and Jordi Belair as the colorist. VC Joe, VC's Joe Sabino is the letterer, and uh, Julian Totino Tedesco did this awesome painting on the cover. And it has editors Charles Beecham and Alana Smith, with the supervising editor Sana Aman Amanet. Sana Amanet. So, okay, whew. sorry for all those. If uh, I pronounced any of those wrong, uh, please give me a phone call and uh, I'd love to chat with you about it. Anyway, uh, here we go on Hawkeye Volume 2. This is as always, uh, some of my favorite art. I like how simple it is, yet it is extremely crazy detailed. At the same time, um, let me see if I can find you some of my favorite stuff here. So yeah, we got some cool colors going on like that. And uh, let's see if I can... There are, as always, uh, I'm a big fan of clones, and uh, here's some cloning stuff going on. Uh, there's a Villainous, and she clones Hawkeye, Kate Bishop's body, and puts her mind in that clone. And uh, all the craziness ensues where uh, she hangs out with her friends, and the friends are like, something's wrong with her today. And uh, yeah, it was pretty fun stuff. I, I really enjoyed that part of it. I, I'm a sucker for clone stories. That's why, uh, you know, Multiple Man's my favorite, because uh, he does a lot of cloning. And... Awesome as always, there is even some uh, Wolverine action here with X-23, a little kid Wolverine, and an actual Wolverine that hangs around with him. I like the little thing they do here where uh, it shows all these targets on them, and she's thinking of them as in uh, what she could throw at them or what she can make them do by knocking them over. A lot of cool stuff like that. Uh, the fighting in this is crazy awesome. I love it. and. Uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm getting a real big kick out of uh, reading Hawkeye here. Um, and yeah, there's been a lot of uh, buzz about Hawkeye on the Twitters and the Facebooks lately because uh, they showed some footage of Haley Steinfeld, uh, who I think is awesome because she was in Bumblebee and she was Spider-Gwen. Uh, she's going to make a great uh, Kate Bishop. Check out this freaking page. Well, it's actually a double page, but anyway, holy cow. You see all that? Is it? I mean, that's just crazy. I could stare at that for hours, and I think I did. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm really loving Hawkeye, and uh, I like the art style especially, and there's some crazy stuff going on in here. Uh, she, her, uh, Kate Bishop's father is a villain, and uh, she's remembering some stuff about her past, uh, digging up some clues about her missing mom, and she's, you start to wonder if the dad had something to do with it, and yeah, it's all good stuff. Um, and there's some, uh, yeah, Clint Barton shows up here, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's always fun to read Hawkeye, always fun with the, because of the art style, and this one had clones in it, and so you, you got me right there. Um, so that's Hawkeye 2. Now I'm going to move on to another one that's uh, quickly become one of my favorites. Uh, this is one that uh, on Free Comic Book Day, um, this creator offered me uh, a Dropbox full of this comic book, and immediately after reading it, I went on to... Uh, online and I bought volumes 1, 2, and 3. This is Bloodstain 
volume one and uh, oh, I'm getting too much glare on that cover here so this is Bloodstained Volume 1 and it is crazy good. Linda Sedgick does the art on this and uh, and the story. And this is about a guy named Vlad Stein. Vlad Stein. And um, actually it's more about Elliot. A girl that's called Elliot but she calls herself Ellie. And uh, she's struggling to uh, keep a job. And there's this one job with this she calls up the number and it's got a creepy voice and she's like oh, I can't work there it's creepy and uh, her sister's like what about this job and what about this job and she keeps she has all these crazy stories about why she can't work here and why why she got fired here and why she quit here and uh, so she was a a door-to-door -door survey person and she knocks on this door to ask surveys and the guy answers the door with a uh, hatchet and a knife that has blood all over it and and uh, apron covered in blood and a weird stovetop hat and she's like I couldn't work there and she described the guy and she's like yeah and then uh, yeah so all these jobs she couldn't do and she actually got a waitress job and she held on to that for a long time until they let her go because she was too new. Um, they had to cut back because of uh, the economy and all that, so she can't catch a break. So finally she goes back to that job board and picks that uh, piece of paper that had the phone number for Vlad on it. She calls it and he's like, oh yeah, if you want to work here, you got to get here right away. I'm ordering the ticket and all this. And you find out later that uh, he uh, answered the phone in his sleep and he's been out of it but it's it's so good entertaining I mean like there's no superheroes no superpowers or anything in it it's just a good story and uh, I mean the artwork is amazing I think it's all digitally painted I have no idea how to do that myself I just don't have the technology for it I guess but yeah it's good stuff and uh, I'm loving the story but the best part of this comic in my opinion is uh, the bonus material I, I hit this bonus material and uh, there's a little story about how Linda's husband uh, Stefan who uh, you know creator of Sunstone which is another favorite of mine he she had a little artist writers block thing going on and uh, he drew her this picture based on a favorite song of theirs and suddenly it sparks all all the good ideas for this and she's like well what if how how did they live their lives how did they meet how did this and that and uh, she got past her artist writer's block and that's cool stuff she drew uh, herself and her husband that's awesome and so yeah this is this is a cool way of doing the bonus material I love it um, maybe I'll I'll steal that and do my own version of that of how I came up with my Peter Pan the vampire and I'll draw myself stupid stuff like that me as a teenager and all that so yeah the bonus material I, it's awesome uh, I love it it's a fun way to do it the whole book is fun and uh, I have issues or volumes two and three in my read pile and I'm loving it I can't wait until uh, Linda releases Punderworld that's one that the comics are funny uh, I've read a lot of it on that Dropbox and I want to get a hard copy of that too and uh, yeah so Punderworld is a about Hades and Persephone and so in case you was wondering so check this one out Bloodstain Volume 1 by Linda Sedgick and uh, man, awesome read I can't say how much too much I can't say enough about how much I loved it and uh, yeah, it was crazy awesome. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, um, in case you were noticing, this is not my usual Red Arb Studios. Uh, I've been cleaning a school this week and I, I, I've i got a whole stack of comics and stuff that I need to review, so I thought, hey, I'll throw an episode together while I'm working because I'm done, but I still have to be on the clock for a little while. And uh, yeah. 
So this is not written in our studios. I'm in a janitor's closet in some school. I cannot tell you which school because that might get me in trouble. Who knows? Anyway, and uh, last week, one of my daughters stayed homesick, and uh, I said, hey, you want to watch a movie? And she's like, yeah, what movie? And I'm, I said, here's one that has been my favorite for a long time. Let's watch it. And uh, here I am to talk to you about Memoirs of it. Memoirs of an Invisible Man with Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah. It's also got uh, McKean, Michael McKean in it, You know who you may know from, uh, he per played Perry White on the Smallvilles, and uh, and he was the dad on Beetlejuice. So, uh, and you know uh, Chevy Chase from Christmas Vacation and all those gems. Daryl Hannah, she was in Splash. She's the mermaid. And... Uh, so yeah, this is one of my favorites. It's an it's a freaking awesome story. Uh, I loved it. I always loved it. I think it came out in '87 or '88 or '89, and I've been watching it for a long time. The copyright here says it's 2003. I know it wasn't 2003, but yeah, the CG was pretty new for its time. And uh, but you get past that because the story is so good that. Uh, and even some of the CGI that they did back then uh, is crazy. So, uh, if you get a chance, check out Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Uh, it took me a long time to hunt down this copy. Uh, there's a bunch of movies on my list of that I really need to have in my collection, and some of them are unable to. I'm unable to find them. Like uh, Intensity by Dean Koontz. Uh, it was a. They turned it into a movie or a show, I can't remember, I think it was a Hallmark movie, I'm not sure, but it had uh, John C. McGinley in it, uh, one of the Bobs from Office Space, you know, and he was on Scrubs. That's one movie, if I could ever find it on DVD, I, it was a favorite of mine, and I'm a Dean Koontz fan, so... I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Oh, someone's texting me. It's my wife. Uh, so, yeah, um... Ah, oh, shoot. Let me see what it says real quick before I get on with it. Oh, yeah, that's right. She wants to know if I'm bringing home dinner. So I'm going to hurry and answer her and then get back to the show. Okay, so that was Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Now on to the Kickstarters. Kickstarter, Kickstarters. You want to know what's on Kickstarter right now? because there is some good stuff on Kickstarter right now. Um, right now, Mirka Andolfo's Sweet Paprika statue is on Kickstarter. Um, I would love to get it, I just don't have the money for it. And I'm, I've been waiting patiently for Sweet Paprika, the comic, to hit uh, the comic shop. Is I think it's hitting soon. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. And uh, I'm gonna have my Comic Shop Gamers Asylum hold it for me because that Sweet Paprika is about a demon that's in love with an angel. The uh, stuff I've seen of it is amazing and uh, the statue looks amazing. I wish I could get it for my shelf but I just don't have the money. Check out Mirka Andolfo's Sweet Paprika statue on Kickstarter till December 21st. You could get the statue or if you want, just get the art book. She has an art book that shows sketches of sweet pack, paprika and stuff like that. Check it out. Um, the Last Ember, number one, is on Kickstarter until December 15th. It's by Brant Fowler. It is... Um, so it's a girl hunted by a serial killer and harassed by bullies. And uh, it sounds awesome. Uh, I think there's more than this first... I, it's confusing. It says Last Ember number one, but I swear I've seen more issues online. And so I don't know. Uh, that's the only reason I'm not backing it is because it, it feels like I'd be lost. Um, but it has has piqued my interest. Um, Thirsty is on Kickstarter right now till December 30th. Thirsty is a not safe for work comic by Pat Shand. It is Four erotic stories. Um, it, I don't know if you shy away from that. I don't, you know, with Sunstone and uh, Familiar. And there's quite a list of them that I've been reading like that. Sunstone, Familiar, and I don't know. There's quite a list out there of ones that are not safe for work, but 
Oh yeah, and I roved out. Those are some definitely not safe for kids. So uh, four erotic stories by different uh, creators, and they all intermingle with each other. I'm in on already because I mean, uh, Pat Shand is in on it. Uh, I'm getting to where I'm. I'm gonna back everything that Pat Shand does because he blows me away every time. So with his uh, Destiny New York little girl and uh, stuff like that all those a lot of good stuff um, so check out Thirsty on Kickstarter it's on there till December 30th and the Saturn effect Alpha is on Kickstarter and uh, it's a 24 page first issue of 8 issue series and uh, it's about two sibling siblings that are living in new colonies on new worlds and uh, so like a lost in space kind of thing or something so yeah I don't know if they're the way the Kickstarter Kickstarter is uh, worded it makes it sound like there are issues before this or a series before this I don't know if they interconnect or something I'll have to look into that maybe if you're if you watch this show please uh, hit me a comment or something and tell me what's going on there Miskatonic High number nine is on Kickstarter till December seventeenth. Miskatonic High is uh, one of my favorite series, so I am really loving that one. Check that one out. Uh, it's about a bunch of kids that go to high, this high school, Miskatonic High, obviously, and uh, paranormal weird things keep happening to them. One of them's dead. One of them's a spirit, and uh, one of them's a witch. One of them can see dead people. And one of them's a rat girl. There's a lot of a lot of crazy stuff going on in Mis Miskatonic High. So if you're new to the series, you could get all nine issues in one backing, and uh, or you could get the trade and four issues, something like that. There's a lot of different options. There's even a uh, Lovecraft Lovecraft PI tie-in with Miskatonic High. So there's a lot of stuff you can get, a lot of fun stuff. Um, Miskatonic High, check that one out. It is awesome. Pop Kill number three and four, the finale, is on Kickstarter right now till Christmas. Check that one out. Um, I, I I just uh, did a review for Pop Kill one and two last week, I think, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. The art was crazy, uh, the story is crazy, and uh, I loved it. So check out Pop Kill on Kickstarter till Christmas Day. Lars and the Awkward Yeti Volume 1 is on Kickstarter. It is a comic strip. It's funny. It's um, just kind of like a Daily Post kind of comic strip. So uh, check that one out. It's about uh, a guy and his anxiety. And uh, that's where the Heart and Brain comics originated from. So And I love those. They, they crack me up every time. So check those out. Uh, follow the Awkward Yeti on the social medias. And that's on Kickstarter till December 23rd. Crossover Division number one is on Kickstarter till December 11th. Oh my gosh, that's tomorrow. You better check it out quick, or it's today by the time I post this. Uh, sorry about that. But Crossover over Division number one, it's a 48 page story about uh, it's basically a police force that uh, they investigate whenever a story becomes real, like Wizard of Oz or Cthulhu or say Peter Pan so check that one out crossover division uh, I can't wait to see that whenever uh, someone does something with fairy tales like that I'm interested in it speaking of fairy tales Snow White zombie apocalypse number what number are we up to three or four is on Kickstarter till December 17th you can probably get the whole shebang on there and uh, yeah I can't wait to see what happens after they've met the Lumberjack, and uh, I'm, I'm really loving that storyline. They're doing a crazy good job. Brenton Langle is doing awesome on that. Um, yeah. So check out Snow White Zombie Apocalypse on Kickstarter until December 17th. Oh, shoot. This one's over. Crossing 5. That one ended yesterday. Dang nabbit. And uh, that one ended yesterday. That one ended yesterday. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I should have made this episode yesterday, but... Okay, so... 
That brings me to, if you have a Kickstarter or Indiegogo project going, and you think, hey, uh, this might interest you, check it out. If you hit me up on it and it's not racist or hateful or just flat out despicable, uh, I will talk about it. So hit me up, uh, say, hey, check out my Kickstarter, and uh, I will check it out. I will talk about it. and. Um, who knows, I might even be the backer of it, and I'll talk about it. So if you have something you want me to know about, Kickstarters or podcasts or whatever, let me know about it, and uh, I will check it out. What have I been watching lately? Um, I have been watching uh, Marvel 616 on uh, the Disney+, Plus, and it is an awesome show. It talks about uh, the different it interviews creators and writers and artists and talks about uh, what they do at Marvel and all that fun stuff and I'm really loving it. Uh, so far I've listened, there was one episode about the uh, Japanese Spider-Man TV show that was in the 70s and then there was an episode about uh, girls right, creating in comics, writing and drawing and I think the one I'm on now is people that do not live in America that are working for Marvel. So, really cool stuff, and I can't wait to see. I don't know how many episodes there are, 616, but that's going to be awesome. So, that's the end of my Kickstarters today, and, uh, oh shoot, yeah, that's right, I did get a comic in the mail today, so I can hit the mailbox. Mailbox, mailbox, what did I get today? I got... Super Scouts number three from uh, Ryan Little. Yes, uh, I backed this on Kickstarter and I can't wait to read this one. This one's a little thicker bound than the uh, last few issues, but the art is awesome. I can't wait to throw that in the read pile and get to it. So that's it. Um, I better I better wrap up this day, um, finish up. Oh yeah, that reminds me too. Uh, Kirby Crackle. Um, is a nerd rock band. They sing songs about Nintendos and comic books and fun stuff like that. They have a sale going on right now. Check them out at kirbycrackle.com and find out what kind of deals they have on music. It's a good Christmas gift and uh, yeah, Kirby Crackle is one of my favorite bands and all that fun stuff. So I better throw the garbage out and then get out of this school. Thanks for watching.